Good afternoon, everyone. Today, this afternoon of the auspicious day, I'm going to take you, all of you, to 1958, the era of Chacha Nehru. Ali Nehru visited China in 1958 as, as a guest and was given from Chinese government the red carpet to treatment. Nehru was so pleased, so influenced, so overwhelmed by this kind of treatment and all kinds of agreements that Pandit Nehru pronounced Hindi, Chini, Bhai Bhai. Pandit Nehru took uh, his principal, five principles with him to China. These five principles were known as Panchashil. In Sanskrit, punch means five, shield means principles. Chinese government was very pleased to sign, and both the nations actually came very close to each other, and they were known as Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai. Palindaru returned from there very impressed, very overwhelmed, very propitiated. And today we are going to talk about what were these five principles of Pandit Nehru or Panchil. Now Panchil did not last longer than two or three years. After two, two or three years, China, though agreed to the Panchil not to invade any nation, invaded Tibet as Alexander the Great has said that China is a dragon. China proved to be dragon and dragonized Tibet. Not only that, but Pandit Nehru tried every single thing, all the coaxing, cajoling, but China did not budge. Finally, Pandit Nehru declared a war against China to fend for Tibet, but that was in vain. It did not work. PN did not succeed. As a matter of fact, this war was counterproductive as we could not, or PN could not, protect Tibet, but on the contrary, India lost 65,000 square kilometers of Arunachal Pradesh and Pandit Nehru were to force to dispatch SOS to United Nations to come to our rescue and ask China to stop otherwise. Only God knows how far China had malicious design to move into India. China took over 65,000 square kilometers of Arunachal Pradesh as China has always maintained that entire Arunachal Pradesh used to belong to China in the prehistorical days, and we, the India, actually occupied it, and China has been trying to retrieve that part of India, that entire Arunachal Pradesh is there. They teach their students that entire Arunachal Pradesh used to belong to China, and the Chinese brave soldiers have acquired or retrieved only half of it, and it is the Cumbersome responsibility, a kind of loyal responsibility, a patriotic responsibility of the posterity, the students of today, to grow up, join the army, and retrieve it back from Indian occupation. We teach our students this belong to us, that is, the students should belong to that. Now, what is Panchashil? Panchashil is a five principle. What this Panchil was comprised of? It, it was comprised of five different kind of principles. Number one was no war pact and a peaceful coexistence between China, India and all other surrounding neighboring Asian nations. That was dandy. It was signed with a straight face. China was happy. Chinese Premier was happy. Indian Prime Minister uh, Mr. P. and Pandit Nehru were happy and every single, every single thing came out okay. The meeting was very pr fruitful, very successful, very productive because now both the leaders and the peoples of both the nation can go to sleep 
without any kind of anxiety that the war is going to break out between two giant nations, namely India. But within a couple of years, as I mentioned, China invaded uh, Tibet, war broke out between in India and China, between elephant and dragon, and that was cataclysmic war. Meaning the first principle was, was absolutely violently violated by China. Point number two is respect for territorial integrity. Whatever is ours, we are going to respect it. Whatever is Chinese, Chinese going to respect it. Chinese people are going to respect our line of actual control, and we are going to respect the line of actual control of China. Means the Chinese border will be respected by us. Our border will be respected by China. But it did not happen. The war broke out and the China invaded 65,000 square kilometers of Arunachal Pradesh, lately took away Akshay China, took away 5% of Kashmir, and took away 50% of Glacier. Glaciers are also, Siachen glaciers are also taken away from us by Pakistan and China both. Point number three. Economic cooperation in the development. Economic cooperation. Both the nations should cooperate each other in economic trajectory. They both actually provide helping hand. They provide all kinds of needs and wants. Whatever the need of China, we should provide and whatever our need China must provide us. This way, we agreed in the punch shell that Economic cooperation must be very, very prosperous, prospering, both the nations masses. But it did not happen after the war. India and China were loggerhead, and for a long period of time they remained loggerhead. But fortunately now, for last about two, a decade or so, China and India both have actually signed the uh, treaty, and now we have been exchanging the goods and the services to both the nations in the tune of around $20 billion every year. Free trade agreement, we call it FTA. Point number three is, sorry, point number four is exchange of cultural activities. Mao Zedong, the Premier of China and our Prime Minister, Mr. Nehru, Chacha Nehru both agreed that we should exchange the people, our culture, our movies, our, our, our music, our every single thing, including education, scientific exchange, whatever the China has should share with us and whatever we develop, we should share with China. And this way, we should create a model societies. Chinese and Indian societies should be model societies. They both should actually progress hand in hand. They both should progress in every tantrum to tantrum. And they should not have anything superior or inferior between these two nations. But every single thing, both the nations should share, develop, and then exchange in both the nations. It lasted. For some time after that, there was a long gap after the war. But again, now fortunately both the nations have actually uh, revived that part of the uh, punch wheel. And uh, now every single thing is hunky-dory, going everything, hallelujah. Point number five, or principle number five. Comprehensive collaboration without polarization. Both the nations re-agreed that we should actually collaborate in every single thing in a comprehensive way in technology, in agriculture, in economy, in education, in culture, whatever. Whatever China has, China must share with us. Whatever we have, we must collaborate with China. And this way, we both should be transparent society for each other. We should not actually have any kind of rivalry or any kind of malice in any field. But there should be friendship, there should be chaminess, there should be cordial ties in comprehensive sectors, in comprehensive technology, comprehensive education, comprehensive Scientology, comprehensive space science, and comprehensive 
development in our logistics and logisticals. So this is Panchishwil. Now, fortunately, both the nations are actually reviving the ties of 1958, and fortunately, progress will be sustainable, and eventually the time will come that both the nations are going to sit down and parley, and they are definitely going to resolve the territorial issues like Akshay China, Siachen Glacier, Coco Island, Arunachal Pradesh, and the Baltimore, and we are again going to be Hindi, Chini, bye-bye. Thank you very much for listening. That's all the time we have. See you again next time. Until then, God bless everyone on this planet. Amen.